Hey, this is JR from Trade Skillers Anonymous, and I appreciate you coming by and checking out this video today. We're going to get into the top five things that you might find beneficial when you're thinking about adding a CNC machine to your shop. And we're going to cover those today. I appreciate you coming by. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so coming in at number one is everybody's favorite end grain cutting boards. And I'm gonna put this in a uh, picture in picture environment down below. But what we're gonna talk about is the profile, the, the area around, right, that creates the edges of the board, but also the juice groove that most people would cut into an end grain cutting board. So why I say this is important is that if you are cutting a rough shape and then using something like a radius jig to achieve that corner and let me just give you a good view of that there there are other examples um, this is a different kind that you know this plate will change but what inevitably happens is that you lay this on a board right and you're going to use a flush trim uh, router bit here because you're going to come around end grain here this is a this is sometimes a dangerous maneuver with a handheld router by using a cnc machine i can turn this loose i can put a blank on my cnc and have it cut out this profile um, and it's just going to do a very consistent the same speed the same radius uh, every single time and then before we get too much further surfacing end grain cutting boards is something that gets talked a lot about how do you do it? Um, some folks really say not to use uh, a planer of any kind because you'll get a lot of tear out. Sanding takes, you know, forever. I can tell you what I use is a white sides one inch surfacing bit, which is actually in my, in my CNC machine at the moment. But this one inch bit is going to travel, you know, across this whole board. It does a phenomenal job of cleaning things up. Um, this also has greater capacity than any planer that currently exists, uh, at least that I know of. So I've got a 15 inch helical head and it does a fine job, but you know, if I need some capacity greater than 15 inches, I need a different way to surface or flatten them. CNC machine is a great way to do that. So, um, then the last thing we'll talk about with these. So you're going to start out with, um, some blanks, right? So this is what you're probably used to seeing, and this is from a run that I did probably a couple of years ago, right? So it saves a lot of time being able to just chuck these into my CNC machine, cut out the profile, that's the outer edge, but the real time saver and the thing that'll cut down on your anxiety like a bottle of Xanax is this juice groove is usually achieved with a uh, bowl bit and a some type of jig that holds that uh, handheld router firmly in place you'll see it time and time again where people talk about the fact that their router moved or something unexpected happened and they get this funny lip you know and so forth cnc machine is just not going to happen so that's number one cutting uh cutting boards and the way that they can help you batch those out this this run was about 30 boards i think um, and was able to use my CNC to help me out. And, you know, I can turn the machine loose while I go do something else. So very handy. Okay, coming in at number two, uh, catch-all trays. So a very easy, you know, piece to make, but, you know, if you have to make enough of them, it gets pretty repetitive. So uh, I have found that my CNC can be a real help with these, not only from a design standpoint but you know you could put a blank in here big enough to cut out multiples of them and just let the machine go to work while you're otherwise you know doing something else in your shop so this is an example of a run i think this is about 30 uh catch-all trays and they're uh kind of right off the machine state uh with a little bit of finish on them and uh, i've i found it to be very helpful for me as some of the work was coming off the machine. I could begin, you know, kind of a post-process, a little touch-up with, you know, a few licks with some sandpaper and, you know, you're all set. But really the, the neatest thing, um, you know, you can make the depth, the shape, um, again, the profile cut. So cutting this out of your blank and especially as you get around the corners, um, you're, you know, you're prone to some chip out there as you transition from the edge grain into the end grain. 
Um, so, you know, again, the CNC, you can deliver a very consistent uh, tool speed uh, in terms of rotational speed, but also the feed rate. So how uh, fast it's going around um, the different uh, corners. So it's very easy to create batched workflows. The depth, shape, and design are limited really only by your imagination. They're highly repeatable once you have your CAD CAM package set to, you know, how you'd like the piece to come out. Um, you can just rock and roll. And this is just a different example. So you could engrave on the interior or in the case of this one, this was on the bottom of uh, one of these catch trays. Um, you know, the design um, features that are available to you with a CNC machine are really, they're, they're only limited by your imagination, as I said. So um, another great use of a CNC machine. Let the robot do the work while you're out uh, in your shop doing the next piece or something entirely different. Let the machine work for you. Okay, coming in at number three are picture frames. And, you know, a lot of woodworkers make custom frames. I know I certainly have done it um, for custom pieces of art. And one of the nice things about a lot of CAD CAM software, and I use Vectric primarily, um, you can make any profile that you want. So this profile here uh, that this frame is made up of is not purchased millwork. Uh, I didn't go and buy that. Uh, blank. It was made right on my CNC and I will be running um, down in a picture-in-picture -picture environment the time-lapse of a test that I did uh, to use Vectrix molding profiles to make a custom uh, picture frame profile that I needed for a particularly deep uh, piece of art. You know, other things that you can do. So this was also made, you know, on the CNC machine, the frame itself. But then in the corners, you can see that there's a nice little embellishment there that the customer wanted um, to have in the corners. So again, when you think about woodworking and you're either trying to give something um, nice to someone or something that just doesn't feel off the shelf, or if you're doing it professionally and um, you need to sell the sizzle on your work, right? What makes you different than everybody else? Well, it's the ability to do custom profiles, custom embellishments, um, then this frame was also made on my Onefinity CNC and the profile is not only custom made, right? So there's no other one like it that I know of. Um, but this person is also a fan of J.R.R. Tolkien. And so I was able to put some embellishments inside the frame profile, uh, that really took it up a notch for the person that was going to use that frame. So that's number three, stick with us. We only got two more to go. Okay, so now we're coming up to number four. So this is really gets into more of my particular workflow, uh, or, or I guess I should say maybe where I spend the most of my time. So as it relates to furniture, complex shapes, and using templates. You know, using templates means you can go as nuts as you want to with shapes and testing and prototyping on cheap material to get exactly what you're looking for. During no time are you testing, you know, with your actual workpiece. Uh, you will end up at a place where by using a template, you're going to revert to uh, your traditional woodworking method. So you're going to make a template. So in this case, 90 plus percent of this project is made with traditional woodworking. But what I really wanted was this top edge to have a really nice but soft arc once it was assembled. And then I also wanted a very uh, particular position um, and shape for this handhold. So as a person would climb this ladder, that's where their hand would go or for stowing it away because it folds up. Um, so I really wanted that to be very specific. And unlike how you might do that uh, with traditional methods where you're gonna draw a line or you know take a piece of wood, bend it into an arc and draw a pencil and then try to either jigsaw or bandsaw close to the line and then sand to the line, I was very interested in making sure that this arc was very, very consistent. So in order to do that, this was the actual uh, template that I made. So it doesn't have to be the, the size of the entire piece here. Just you would line this up to the feature and where you want the feature uh, on your particular piece. So, and I'm really glad that I used a template in this particular case instead of my actual live workpiece because I had an error in my software where I 
told the bit to cut inside the line instead of outside the line and the first template that I made was undersized. If I had done that live on my piece, I would have ruined it. So I was very glad to be using a quarter inch plywood template instead of my actual piece. And then where the steps come together, you know, the person who's getting this uh, ladder was interested in having, you know, a Scottish, whoops, a Scottish thistle here and a few little bees, you know, throughout the thing just to give it a decorative touch while they use it in the kitchen. But what I'll say in general is that this is the first step where you start to see this thing really come into aiding and augmenting your current skill set as a woodworker. It can help you to take um, your furniture piece or whatever work piece you're working on to the next level. So that's number four, one more to go. All right, well, first let me say thanks for hanging to the end. We're gonna go through number five and then I've got a small uh, outro for you. Um, but where I find most of my work lives is in one-off type of either work pieces or furniture uh, or something that's pretty specific to a task. Um, and, and that's really just that I don't like doing the same thing over and over again. I guess I get a little bored with that. So uh, here's one example where using a CNC helped me to achieve something that would have been pretty difficult, could have been done otherwise, but this is a dish rack for what are oversized plates that were go going inside of a cupboard. So there's a couple of things going on here. So I had a, a known height right to the next shelf, a known depth, which really drove how angled these plates needed to be. So you ask, well, how does that relate to a CNC? Well, by building this upper and lower piece inside my CAD CAM software, you could see that I've got the larger ovals here, which are for the dish to sit in, and then smaller holes uh, along the perimeter, and that's where the dowels go in. And I'll have these down in a picture-in-picture -picture environment for you. Uh, but by using a mirror function in the software, what that allows me to do is make sure that you know this soft radius and this hard 90, this soft radius, that hard 90 has a matching top part and that all of the dowels are perfectly aligned. So I know this thing is gonna stand up straight the entire time. Um, and one of the kind of passion projects that I have, again, is really centered more around furniture. And so you, you can certainly build this without a CNC machine, but this is a part of a um, bedroom suite. Now black wasn't you know my choice, but that's, you know, you, not everybody likes chocolate. That's why God invented strawberries, right? But in the example here where you see, maybe I should come in here, this little swoop that's built into the uh, top piece. Um, so it has a very soft angular. Um, and because there are two nightstands that are part of this, I want them to match exactly. So these side panels of these nightstands were made directly on my uh, CNC machine. That was not done with a template. And then also, as you see on these drawer fronts at each of the corners, there's going to be, um, you know, I guess, I don't know if I should call it filigree or whatever, but some design that the person picked out that they wanted in each corner. And again, those drawer fronts were put right onto my CNC once I had them, you know, sized properly for the uh, carcass. Um, you know, those were then put on my CNC machine. And you know, each, each of the drawers were done independently. It probably took five minutes, uh, but there's no way I could have repeated that in any other way um, as precisely as uh, these were made. So another great use for a CNC machine to move your current situation up a notch. So yeah, there it is. Five of the uh, top ways that I have found that a CNC machine uh, has helped me in an otherwise all traditional woodworking environment here in my shop. There are a lot more ways that you could use a CNC machine. We're probably going to get into those in the future. Uh, but for today, I'd be curious if you could leave a comment down below. How has a uh, CNC machine helped you uh, in your wood shop either do something that previously wasn't attainable because of a tool or a skill you didn't have in the past 
or have you just upped your game with a piece of um, a piece of your work that was only achievable by way of your CNC? And while you're down there making that comment, just maybe consider subscribing if you found that there was some value in the content that I'm bringing you today. I really appreciate your visit, and we'll see you soon. Take care.